Alice the Car Doctor back with another repair tutorial video today. I don't think I've done one quite like this. Today I'll be replacing the AC compressor on this Camaro. What year Camaro? What, what year Camaro this is? I don't know. <laughs> let me check. Uh, let me find out real quick. 2015. Ooh, I was going to say 2015, but uh, I wanted to be sure. Um, this job was previously diagnosed at another shop. So I didn't actually diagnose this one. Um, if you guys want to see me diagnosing, doing a lot more diagnostic of AC systems, write down in the comment. You know, I love hearing from you guys. And by the way, if you hear motors going off in the background, my kids they done built a racetrack in the back of my shop. So they back there flying around the backyard with their mopeds and go-karts. Mm -hmm. Anywho, um, this is what's going on. I will also be replacing the condenser, but I'm gonna make that in another video. So it's gonna be like a two part video. The first video is gonna be me replacing the AC compressor. Um, so let's grab our wrenches and let's roll. All right, so the tools I'll be using for this job, nothing special, just be using my standard socket set, ratchet. Um, I'm gonna try to make this as realistic as possible for you guys at home. I'm not gonna be using any power tools on this video. The only thing I will be using that's kind of semi-special is an AC machine. Um, I already recovered the old Freon out. Um, I didn't wanna bore you with that. Um, you guys at home, if you need to recover Freon, the proper way, as I say the proper way, cause most people they'll just bust the line up and let it into the atmosphere. Don't do that, do it properly if you can. Um, you can rent a recovery machine um, from I think your local auto parts store and recover it and put it back in the system. So these are the tools. I'm gonna jump right into the repair. And the first thing I'm gonna do is remove all my plastics. So to remove the engine cover, you just remove the oil cap and bam. It comes up nice and easy. Put that off to the side. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove my air box, just so I can get a general picture of what's going on and how I need to do the job. And plus, I need to remove it for the condenser anyway, so. Now, with these little clips, you may run into this in GM. they little locking clips, so what you basically have to do is just take your finger, pop it out. It's like a little, yeah, so then you can push the pin and bam, that's how you do that. So I'm gonna take my overkill screwdriver here <laughs> and release, undo the band clamps. Well, I can just undo this one because I'm gonna remove the whole box. And that should just slide right off. Be real gentle with plastic parts like that because it can snap. Now on the box, if you want to remove this whole box, it looks like it's held in with some 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter bolts. Ooh, let me go grab my light. I'm pretty sure the lighting is terrible. Um, almost forgot about the lighting. Oh, it's aluminum. All right. Ooh, it's a little bright. Is that good lighting? It's fine. Okay. So, let's just pull right up. Got the light. I right, can move that out the way. Now, the reason you have to pull it right up, you have to kind of give it some strength because it has like a push pin type ordeal. It's like this nipple that has this little neck on it. And this is a rubber grommet down here and it kind of pushes into the rubber grommet. So once you take these two bolts off, it's gonna feel like it's still another bolt holding it. Just give it a nice little tug and it'll pop out that um, grommet. Um, just a little tip there. All right, now that I got the air box out the way, I can clearly see the compressor. Um, I may be able to do this all from the top, but we'll see. I haven't done one since last season, so it's been about a year. I've done one last um, summer 
when it was real hot, but it's been a long time. Well, not really. It's just I work on so many cars. It's, sometimes it's hard for me to remember certain procedures, so I may be able can may be able to do this on the ground. We're about to find out. So the next step, I'm kind of blabbering on. I apologize. Um, the next step is to remove the serpentine belt. Now, most people don't know where the tensioner is. Like you have a, a spring-loaded tensioner on these things. And I know where it is, but I'm going to show you a trick how to find it. So if you ever want to know what the spring-loaded tensioner is on, on any um, spring-loaded tensioner system, you can just grab the belt and give it a nice little tug. And whatever flexes or whatever moves, you um, that's the tensioner. So this is that's what's moving. So I know that's the tensioner. Yeah, the lighting is good. See how that's moving? So I know I need to get a half inch. It's a half inch drive because that's a half inch drive um, two head. Um, Sometimes they'd be three eighths, be a little bit smaller than that, but that's a half inch. So I'm gonna grab my half inch. So I've got my half inch ratchet and basically just putting it on there. And whichever way it flexes, that's the way you wanna go. So I'm going go this way and you kind of need two hands, one hand you're holding it, the other hand you're holding the tensioner. So I just peeled it off the top. I don't know what that, oh, uh, dried up split loom. That's what that is. It's this wire, plastic wire protector and it's just done dried up. All right, so come over here. Finish undoing the belt. All right. Now I got that out the way, I can then start undoing the electrical connector. It should only be one electronic con electrical connector on this, and it's right here. It has these little tabs. Um, I don't know if you can see them very good. Let's see. So it has these two little tabs, one on top, one on the bottom. So basically very easily kind of peel up. Now they can be very brittle, so be very careful with them. Just want to peel up just a little bit. They will snap off these little ears. They will snap off on you. So be gentle with them. They snap off, it will be fine. It's not the end of the world. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna disconnect my AC line. It appears to be a 13 millimeter. See, can you show them the AC line? I know it's real tight in here, guys, so bear with me. I'm gonna try to point at it. So that's the AC line. It's just only one center bolt there that's holding it on. And let's see if I'm right. Let's see if it's a 13. Voila. All right. Um, probably want to get in the front view. That's a bad view back here. Get in the front. there. Now that'll move out the way. So all right. The reason I kind of pulled the line way up here is so you guys can get a better picture of what's going on. Um, normally I kind of just leave it down there uh, but just for video purposes I pulled it up that way. Now Another trick you can do if you're having a hard time finding the bolts, <clears throat> you can grab the new AC compressor and kind of picture how it is on the vehicle. So I know I have a bolt here, bolt there, and a bolt right here. So it's three bolts that hold this thing on. 
So now I know a general idea where my bolts are. Should be one right here and one right here and one down here. They appear to be 13s. So I can just grab my 13. those now for you guys who's wondering uh -oh. oh my screwdriver i thought it was a socket now for you guys who wondering do you need to disconnect the battery in my opinion you don't because you're not working around nothing that has 12 volts on it now, if the starter was in this area or real close to this area and I'm, you know, working with tools, yes, I'll disconnect it because I don't want to bump my tool into the hot wire. You can create fire and possibly short out the computer. Um, now, if you want, you can disconnect the battery just for safety reasons or, you know, better safe than sorry, I guess, but you don't have to. Now, let me see. I may end up having to remove this um, power steering pump because it's like right in the way, or at least the line. I think I'm gonna have to remove the line because when I go to pull the pump out, um, slide it out, it's gonna hit that line. So I'm probably gonna remove that. Here's the last fastener. So I didn't say, but this job, a uh, 10 being the hardest, I give it about a three and a half, four, between a three and a four. Um, it really comes down to having the right equipment when dealing with any AC job because once I get everything back together, you're gonna wanna vacuum down the system. Um, for you guys at home, you will need some peg oil because sometimes these AC, these new AC compressors don't come with oil in them and you have to put the proper amount of oil um, back in them. Um, but this system that I have, the machine, uh-oh, somebody calling me at the wrong time. Um, this machine, it pulls out the oil, so I'm just gonna replace what it pulled out. You wanna take the call? Mm, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I am running a shot while I'm doing these videos, but let's get right back into it. All right, so here's the bolt that you're gonna be taking. These are the three bolts. So you have a bolt, no, um, you have a nut, <laughs> and you have two bolts. Had two bolts. <laughs> Let me uh, try to retrieve that bolt. I'm probably gonna need a magnet because it fell right into the fans and I don't think I can get it by hand. Oh, I did get it, look at that. All right, so these are 13s and I'll show you the way they go. Hold on guys, uh, call. Yeah, let me go oh. to the front Okay. So I want to show you guys the bolts. I got distracted early. I actually grabbed the wrong one. I don't know if you remember. I'm pretty sure you do. It was just a couple of seconds ago. Well, I had a short one. It's supposed to actually be two long ones like this. They're the same length of size. And one of them go right. Yeah, yeah. Make sure I wasn't tripping. I'm telling you guys the wrong stuff. One of them go right here. Next one go right here. Then the um, bolt goes on a stud that sticks out. Speaking of stud, I'm gonna show you the next step <clears throat> of getting this compressor off. So remember why I was telling you guys earlier that I may have to remove this line and this is why. If I try to come out, I, I removed the bottom bolt by the way. I don't, I don't think I got that on camera. But if I try to come out with it, 
it hits on the power steering line. Now, there's two ways you can do this. I've always liked the easy way because sometimes you guys at home may not have the small enough socket that fits on the stud because you can screw out the stud and slide it forward. Or you can grab a 5 8 and crack this line open right here. Um, righty tighty lefty loosey, there we go. Sometimes I gotta remind myself. I don't know if I'm getting old or... <laughs> <laughs> Let me grab a pan. Got my pan right here, because it may leak. May, yep, it is leaking pretty good too. And I don't think I got it good on my pan. Man, don't you hate when you miss the pan? <laughs> there you go. So I'm gonna let that drain out a little bit. I'm still missing the paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna let that drain out a little bit. And once that stops draining, I will come back and um, show you guys me actually sliding it out and getting it out of there. I kind of made a little pathway here. I'm gonna try to slide it out and come up this way, try. Uh, I may have to remove this just to be on the safe side because um, these nipples, these plastic nipples will break on you. So be careful of this line right here. So let's see what happens. We in this together. And it's not coming. <laughs> that plan didn't work. So I may have to, we may have to remove the stud. Well, we're gonna have to remove the stud because uh, it's not clearing. I don't know if because of this harness. Let me try to remove this harness. Screwdriver. Shine some light on the situation. Nope, still not coming off. So yeah, I, I tried shortcutting it, but unfortunately we're gonna have to remove that stud. So what's that mean, from the bottom? No, it's, it's from the top. You just, you need a small enough socket where you can fit on it so you can get it off. So I have to get my small socket. <clears throat> All right, so I got my small little socket set here. My guess is maybe it's a five millimeter. So I'm gonna try that first. Now I am gonna put a link in the description of something similar to this. This came off the Snap-on truck. Um, if you don't do this stuff every day, I don't recommend buying from Snap-on. People who buy from Snap-on is people that use these tools day in, day out. I think I mentioned that on another one of my videos. Um, if you use this stuff day in and day out, they will break and Snap-on, they have a great warranty. And it's convenient. They come to me and I switch it out. But not all of your tools are snap-on. No, nah, not all of them. And I didn't start off with snap-on tools. So that may work. It's five. Let's see. Nope, I'm gonna need something smaller than that. Okay. <laughs> so let me go grab something else smaller than that. So I had a little bit of problem. The socket side is a five millimeter for that stud. It was just on there so tight, it rounded off the, um, the stud um, socket in. <laughs> yeah, stud socket in. So what I had to do, um, this may give you problems at home if it, this happens to you, because what I had to do, I got some small grip pliers here and tighten down on them real hard, like hard as I can, and broke it free. Now it's free, and now 
and yeah, put them on there so tight it's hard to take off the grip pliers. For those who that, you know, are familiar with grip pliers, if you tighten them down real, real tight, it'll be hard to pop them loose. Sometimes what you can do if it is like that, just a little tip, you can take some more pliers and bite down right here and that'll pop them loose for you. So now that I have my, I'm not that I have it broke loose, I'm gonna try to get it with the socket and wrench again. Cause I don't want to sit down there with the pliers and play with it. Now, what I'm gonna have to do is tap this on a little bit. So I'm gonna grab a small little mallet. Will you record? Oh. Yeah. All right. So basically what I had to do is tap it on because when I put the vice grips on there, I uh, messed up the threads a little bit more. Um, so I just had to tap that on. Now I can take this and it should ratchet right off. Hopefully. Yes, it's turning. <laughs> So this is actually the hardest part about this, if that if this happens to you, trying to get this stud out. But hey, we're in this together. Whatever problems I that come at me, you guys gonna see them. I don't hide anything. I'm 100% transparent. Bam. So, uh, it actually came out through that way. So, yes, the compressor is shot. I was not supposed to have, um, trying to catch my breath. <laughs> it's supposed to have um, pulley play like that. So, this is the pulley. The compressor engages. This is the compressor end right here. It's got a magnet on it. And when it's energized, it engages this spinning pulley. So this is without it engage. When you hit the button, it engages and starts spinning with the um, with the pulley. So that's how that works. All right. So what I did was I removed the. Um, it's like a little cap that's down there. Uh, on this now, when you remove these, sometimes sometimes you hear a big rush of air because they vacuum this down with those seals on it. So if it go poof, you know, don't be alarmed. It's fine. Um, so I just got finished just double checking. Uh, you always want to double check your parts because sometimes this aftermarket stuff can be a little funny. Um, I'm gonna double check the fitment. Take the moment out and do that because you don't want to get it in place and be like, oh man, it don't fit. Especially some stuff, you have to squeeze it in there. So uh, as you can see, this one has an extended um, pigtail versus this one. It's internal, that's fine. As long as the bolt holes and everything match up. This one came from AutoZone, I think. Um, that's your division. I think it did. <laughs> I'm sure so, it did. This part is already pre-charged with like three ounces of oil. Um, so the only thing I'm gonna do, um, I took out, I think maybe an ounce of oil out of the system. So I'm just gonna replace that with new oil. Um, so it also came with these seals. And you want to make sure you put these on. If I can open it. Bam. Uh, take that out. So it goes right here. You just basically peel these off if you can. And it doesn't matter which way they go on. Just slide them on there. Oh yeah. All right, now <clears throat> the reversal process. I'm going to hand him slide the AC compressor back down in there. I think I came me up in this direction. Remember, be careful of that hose. Squeeze you on back 
in place. Make sure the harness is not in the way. All right. I'm gonna put my studded boat in last. And you'll see why in a little bit. Now, don't be like me. It'd be also a good idea to actually remove these little caps once you get it in place, because now I'm gonna have to stick a rag down in there and clean out the area because stuff is trying to drop down in there on me. So, that'd be the last thing you remove, just so dirt and debris won't get down in there. Always thread up stuff by hand. Get you a better feel for it. And I do normally take the cap off um, at the end. It's just on video purposes. I just want to kind of show you guys. And... Now on this stuff, you just probably need wrist tight. You don't need to, man, you know, overdo it. Put all your might into it. That's not necessarily necessary. Let me get right here where you are. Ugh. All right, so quick tip. Um, this stud actually goes through this little wiring harness right here. Can you can you see that on camera? So it's like a little bracket piece. And this stud actually goes through that. So make sure you put that back in place because I almost forgot. I'm not gonna bore you with the net lines and everything back, you know, not line, not the lines, but the uh, the bolts, you kind of get the idea for that. I cut back in when I get ready to put the lines back on. All right, get ready to tighten down the, the line portion of it now. Just gonna fix the light. Remember, I always thread in stuff by hand. First, get a couple of threads, then you can put the tool on it. This method will prevent you from cross-threading uh, the threads. I don't know such a tight area. All right, all right, you can sew them out. Now, this don't have to be terribly tight neither. 
remember you're tying down into aluminum so you don't want to put all your might on this stuff so i'll say a good wrist tight would be adequate enough now on this line this line go over this line now if it's under like this this is wrong and plus you kind of have a hard time getting it up in there like that so make sure it's like that now anytime i take off anything I always check the o-rings this o-ring look okay don't look damaged so i'm gonna reuse it same goes here just nice little wrist tight you don't have to put a lot into it and the last step we're gonna put the belt back on I'll show you that as you can see I kind of laid it up here and the reason why I did that so I don't have to look at a diagram when I'm going back on I can just kind of easily put it back in place. This one must not be on over here, okay. Yeah, all right. I don't think I'm gonna have to look at a diagram. <laughs> Over here, where you at? It's not all the way on. AC compressor, there we go. All right, so what just happened was, as you saw, I couldn't really get it over the top of the water pump because on the AC compressor down below, it was off the, the lines. Okay, see how it's nice and flush right here? Imagine if the belt was hanging off to the side right here. So I had to make, you have to make sure everything is pushed in its grooves or the, you would have a hard time getting the belt on. Hopefully I explained that right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is how you do the AC compressor on a 20, 15 charger. Nope. No what? You said charger. <laughs> I'm so used to working on Chrysler's. It's ridiculous. Chevy Camaro. <laughs> Chevy Camaro. <laughs> I didn't mention it before, but this has the 3.6. Um, this is not the V8. The V8 is my favorite. Um, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you put the AC compressor on a, try it again, 2015. Chevrolet Camaro. There you go. <laughs> if you guys have any questions, please write down in the um, comment box. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Alex the Car Doctor out. See you guys next time.